All right, we'll, uh, finish up this midterm and here we go. Number 14 is one that people had some trouble with and mainly the trouble is interpreting what the notation is. Tangent cubed of this thing means take the tangent of this thing and cube the result. So when I'm taking the derivative, the outside function is something cubed. So the derivative of something cubed should be three times that something squared. So I have three times the tangent squared of two x cubed, right? Then take the derivative of the inside. Well, the inside is the tangent of something. So the derivative of the tangent of something is the secant squared of that something. One more chain rule, because that wasn't just the tangent of x, it was the tangent of something else. I now have to multiply by the derivative of what's inside the tangent. And what's inside the tangent is 2x cubed plus 3, and the derivative of that would be 6x squared. So there's two chain rules here. The first, the outside function is cube, then you have a tangent, and then you have that polynomial on the inside. Right? So three times the tangent squared of that thing, secant squared of that thing, derivative of that thing. Right? And it all ends up looking like that. 15, 15. Um, Take the derivative of this one plus the derivative of that one. I think most people got the derivative of the hyperbolic sine is the hyperbolic cosine of x, right? Log of the cosecant of x. The derivative of the log of something is 1 over that something. So there's a cosecant of x on the bottom. But then the chain rule says times the derivative of the inside. Well, the derivative of the cosecant is minus cosecant x cotan x. And the cosecants actually cancel out, leaving just the minus cotan x there. 16. This one was tricky for people. Um, the only way that we have of doing this problem in Calc 1 is using logarithmic differentiation. Um, the take the derivative, not no, sorry, take the log of both sides, so log of y. If I have the log of this thing, I can use the power a property of log to pull that exponent out as a coefficient out in front. So the 1 over x comes out as being multiplied by log of sine x. I choose to write it this way. Rather than multiplying by 1 over x, I'm thinking of it as dividing by x. So now when I implicitly differentiate, derivative of log y is 1 over y times 2y dx, then the derivative of this is the quotient rule. So the bottom squared, bottom times the derivative of the top, log of sine x. So that's 1 over sine x times the derivative of sine x. Uh, minus the top times the derivative of the bottom, but the derivative of the bottom is just 1. I then distributed the... So the x over x squared is just 1 over x, and the minus 1 over x squared is just the minus 1 over x squared. That's got to be distributed into both places. Um, and cosine x over sine x is cotan x. Um, and then multiply both sides by y. So there's the y, right, because y is sine of 1 over x. Anyway, there's the derivative. Yeah, I have people doing a lot of different things on that, but this is the way that that one works. And last page here. Find an equation for the tangent line to this curve at this point. Okay, so first of all, I'm finding an equation of a tangent line. Finding the equation of a line. I need a slope. I need a point that it goes through. Well, I've got a point that it goes through. So now I just need to find the slope. And the slope is going to come from, because I'm a tangent I want a tangent line to the curve, I gotta have the same slope as the curve. So I need to know what the derivative of the curve is at that point. So I'm going to implicitly differentiate. Implicitly because I don't, it's not convenient to solve for y here. So I'm thinking of y as a function of x and taking the derivative with respect to x. Derivative of the x cubed is the 3x squared. Derivative of the 3y squared is 6y times dy dx, right? y is a function of x, so there's a chain rule involved x times y, this is where people messed up the most, uh, that's a product, x times y, right? So it is a product rule, x times the derivative of y plus y times the derivative of x, and the derivative of x is just 1. Solving now for y prime, so the, the 3x squared gets moved over to the other side, there's a minus 3x squared, the y gets moved over to the other side, that's a y. The stuff that has a y prime in it, if you factor that out, there's a 6x, sorry, there's a 6y, and an x, and then divide by that stuff to leave the y prime by itself. So there's the 6y plus x that got divided. So this is what this is a formula that tells you the slope at any point on that curve. But I don't want the slope at any point on the curve. I want the slope at this point on the curve. 
And so here's a mistake that some people made, is they correctly did this, but then they didn't plug the point in to figure out what the slope is at that point. So if I plug in x equals 1 and y equals 2, I end up with negative 5 thirteenths as the slope at that point. So the line, the tangent line then, looks like this. y minus the y coordinate is the slope times x minus the x coordinate. If you multiply that out, you might have gotten something that looks like y equals minus whatever this is, minus 5 thirteenths x plus 31 over 13. I personally prefer uh, this way because I can see the right, I can see it goes through the right point, I can see it's got the right slope. Anyway, use logarithmic differentiation to find this derivative. If you didn't use logarithmic differentiation, you didn't answer the question. I know you can do the quotient rule and the product rule and whatever because you've already proven that to me on the other pages. Here I wanted specifically to see you do the process of logarithmic differentiation because that's part of what I'm testing to see if you know how to do. That's the whole uh, test or assessments to see have you learned the stuff that we've been teaching you. So take the log of both sides and then use the property of logs to split this up. Anything that's in the numerator is going to end up with a plus sign in front of it. Anything that's in the denominator is going to end up with a minus sign in front of it. The biggest problem people had was that they said, oh, this cosine is being multiplied, so it's added. Well, it's being multiplied in the denominator, so it's, it's subtracting on the log here. The exponents end up out in front. So I've done several algebra steps in one step here. But uh, take the log of both sides, break it up. It should look like this. Now I implicitly differentiate with respect to x. So the derivative of natural log y would be 1 over y times y prime. The derivative of this thing is a sum, so you can do each piece individually. This 3 comes along for the ride. The derivative of log of something is 1 over that something, so there is in the denominator, times the derivative of the inside, so there's that extra times 3. So that first part is 9 over 3x plus 1. This one, you got the 1 over that stuff, and then times the derivative of the inside, that's just a 2, so there's that. This one, the minus 3 comes along for the ride, you got the x squared plus 4 down in the denominator, but then you got to multiply by the derivative of x squared plus 4, which is 2x. So you had the 3 times the 2x, that's 6x, and there's a minus sign there. Derivative of natural log cosine x, the cosine x goes in the denominator. The derivative of cosine x goes in the numerator. Um, but the derivative of cosine x is negative sine x, and it turns that minus sign into a plus sign. And so this should be a plus tangent x here. Uh, multiply by both sides by y to get the y over here. So y prime equals the original function y times all that stuff. Okay. Again, if you have any questions, please... Um, post it to the discussion board or send me a WAMAP message and we can uh, clear up anything that you, any issues you still have on this test.